coming up today, but still getting on in Castle Coliseum. Now we're going to 125, Joey Dance and Ben Gillette. Joey Dance on his senior day. Number three wrestler in the country going up against Gillette, who's 12 and 12, also a senior, out of Redfield, South Dakota. Dance already getting to that overtime, looking for that shrug that he likes so much. Some flashy footwear here. His final senior day with the white Adidas. Collar tied with Duck right there. Really nice. Got the ankle fast. Saw Joey Dance riding hard with that claw against Faust last night. Again, that's his go-to ride. Looking for that suck back claw. I mean, we talked about it with the other wrestlers, Devin, as far as... You know, a guy like Zach Epperly will be a guy that'll kind of wait back and feel out the other wrestler to kind of figure him out. Looks like Joey Dance is just wasting no time at all. And he showed it right there with that caution, trying to get that quick shot, that quick ankle off the whistle. Uh, Joey's back and forth sometimes. Sometimes he goes out and tries to push the pace. Uh, sometimes he does feel his guy out. But right there he's got that shrug from that overtie again. Another takedown for Joey Dance up 4-1. Really likes that he feels the pressure and he, let, he goes with it. Uses that own that that strength against the other guy. To back up again. Dance a two-time ACC champion. Two really experienced guys here. One's a fourth-year uh, fourth senior in Ben Gillette, Joey Dance, a fifth-year redshirt senior. And ben Gillette's on a bit of a roll. He's won two in a row. He's beat Devin Brown from West Virginia in South Dakota State's last duel. Unfortunately for him, just facing off against maybe one of the most talented 125 wrestlers in the country. And Joey Dance really has faced the best, too. Just That shows him the best RPI he has in the entire country. Exactly, yeah. Um, I'm curious to see how he does against Thomas Gilman and Nick Suriano from Penn State. Um, he hasn't really faced those guys in a while. Gilman, he's wrestled the past two years a little bit, but um, not this year, so uh, everybody's interested to see those matchups. Only lost one time this year. That was to Darian Cruz of Lehigh. It was a 4-2 to two score. Kind of a common theme for these Virginia Tech wrestlers. Zach Everly only with one loss on the year. That also came against Lehigh. We have two guys going in undefeated that Lehigh match. Uh, it's a tough crowd, tough environment. And Lehigh got those two upsets and kept the match really close there. Gillette needs to be trying to get that one with 15 seconds left. It's a big point. 6-2 lead. So a good first period for Joey Dance. Seen a lot of aggression out of him so far. There's that shuck by again from that overtie. Benjolan starts on bottom. Look for Joey Dance to be coming out front. Nope. Escape for Benjolan. A little bit different than what we saw yesterday. I know that Sean Faust match for Joey Dance, he kind of just rode out Faust for the entire third period. It was almost one of the most impressive things we saw in that match because he did not let up. Yeah, it's interesting. Some guys go in and they, they can just turn some guys. Uh, some guys aren't as good on bottom. And, uh, that was really revealed in Faust. And Joey was able to suck it back two or three times to build his lead. Another takedown for Joey Dance doesn't turn this guy as easily, so he's making sure he builds his lead by cutting him and uh, getting those takedowns. It's a back up. Two minutes of riding time for Joey Dance. Both guys getting back to the center. I like that, not wrestling on the edge. 
Now, there, would there be any advantage of trying to wrestle on the edge of your bench of left? Uh, sometimes. It just depends on the style of wrestler. you got some guys who still like to stay really low to the mat, like to keep their feet on the out-of-bounds so that they can sneak in uh, sneak in takedowns when those guys let up on the edge wrestling mat. Speaking of takedowns, another one for Joey Dance. Now look, 10-4. to four. Another shuck by there to a mat return. Joey Dance looking for the suck back there. Roll through call tilt there. Maybe some near fall points, and they're going to rack up right now for Joey Dance. There's four. Now Dance up by 10, riding time to his name as well. As we head to the third period, a comfortable lead for the senior from Christiansburg, Virginia. Right there, he feels that pressure coming the other way. He sucks him back into that claw. Puts pressure, pressure, pressure one way. Feels it coming the other way, rolls through. Joey Dance trying to go for a pin or maybe a tech fall here. He definitely has a major. Hokies up 17 to three on the team score. Right here, if I'm Joey Dance, I try to get a take. I try to make myself a little better at wrestling here. You got a guy, uh, you got an 11 point lead on, uh, three takedowns off shucks, but we want to see some uh, leg attacks here if he wants to. There you go, right there. Trying to open up himself to new attacks. Only loss for Virginia Tech so far came from Luke Silverberg at 165, but now Joey Dance racking up another two points. And there you see Bone Arrow. Some of our guys have gotten really good at this past, uh, uh, some of the VT guys have gotten good at this past year. Uh, I got Tony Roby and the coaching staff teaches that Bone Arrow really well. Uh, Sal Mastriani, Jared Hart have both gotten really good at this move. And there you go, Joey Dance. So some more near fall points for Joey Dance, and that will likely end it here if he's not able to end it in a pin. So Ben Gillette back, and another tech fall for Virginia Tech. This time from Joey Dance. points are added from Joey Dance. Another impressive match we saw out of the senior, Devin. Big impressive out of Joey Dance, and now we go to 133, and right there you see Seth Gross, the number two 133 wrestler in the entire country. Sophomore out of Apple Valley, Minnesota, he's going to go up against Dennis Gustafson, a top 30 wrestler in the country, but this is definitely going to be one of the bigger tests for Virginia Tech. I think this is one of the matches everybody came here to watch. And Gross only one loss this year. He's 23 and one, wasting no time with an opening shot on Gustafson. Very aggressive guy. Likes to get get on top fast. He's got the limbs to be good on top. As we were talking about yesterday, a lot of longer guys. They like to ride, they like to turn. Now Gustafson with a reversal. Now Seth Gross has some pretty impressive wins this year, Devin. Only one loss, like we said, to Eric Montoya against Nebraska. But he also beat the number three wrestler in the country, Kate Brock from Oklahoma State. And a takedown for Gustafson, taking a lead here. Good shot there from Gross, but Gustafson was able to get him off balance, get in the scramble, and finish it. Already we can see this is going to be a high-scoring match, a lot of action. Seth Gross with the escape right there, ties it right back up, 4-4. Four to four. Very good with that single leg, gets in deep every time. And when he doesn't get in deep, he sucks it in. two options here. Either he's going to start swimming out or he's going to try to bring that leg over over the shoulder there. Now what are Gustafson's options? Right now he's got to scramble like that, try to create some, some distance so he can get, he has, so he can create more options for himself there. Right now, yep, Seth Gross is doing a good job of moving him, getting him off balance. Gustafson. 
Robinson just trying to work his way back to his feet. It's been tough. Gross has uh, used that cradle to stick some pretty high-quality guys in his career. Gross has got to get that Gustafson's head coming towards him, scoop that head and uh, thread that needle, as we say. Lift that arm so you can thread that needle through. Looks like a momentary break in all that action we saw in the first 30 seconds of this match. That happens when you got a guy that's good on top. Eventually he's going to get a hold of something that holds that guy down. Tumbling their way out of the circle, but Gross keeping those toes in. Over a minute of riding time for Gross. Now you got to wonder whether... Dennis Gustafson, if he has choice, if he's going to pick top or uh, bottom or neutral here. Six to four in a very action-packed first period. Gross Again, got him off balance there, got, got him, cut his weight going forward, then tripped him back. Gross is going to go bottom here. Gustafson looking to see if he can delete, delete some of the riding time that Gross accumulated. Gross easily able to get that escape, though. Seven to four in favor of Seth Gross. Seth Gross has the lead early on here in the second period. It doesn't look like Gustafson was intimidated at all that he was facing the number two wrestler in the country. Not at all, and it helps uh, right off the bat. Dennis was able to get that reversal, um, showing that he could actually do that. I mean, he even got a takedown off Gross's shot, so um, knowing you can get one takedown on a guy gives you that confidence going through the match. Seth Gross coming to South Dakota State after he was at Iowa for a season. Another takedown for him. Good limp arm there. You'll see that out of a lot of college guys. Uh, cutting that corner. Guy's got a hard loser and he's just limping that arm out. Gross looking for a splatal here. Dennis Gustafson has to be careful. Gross just looks like he can just dominate on top, Devin. Yeah, he's getting old. He's finding the holding and sticking to him. Right before he had that leg in, uh, first period he had that bar. Now he's just holding on for the past last 10 seconds, making sure not to give up that escape in the last second. Nine to four, almost two minutes of riding time for Gross. As we go to the final period. After Gustafson, what are you trying to do here? As we take a look at this replay, though, right before we get into that. There's that limp arm I was talking about. Dennis had a very hard whizzer there, but uh, put too much pressure on it, and Gross was able to slip that arm out and get behind. After Gustafson, what's the strategy here? It's actually interesting. There's two minutes of riding time against Gustafson. Uh, Gustafson had a little more success on his feet, but they had confidence, confidence in him getting out, and... Sure enough, there he goes. And an escape. Augustinson gets a point back. And of course, that one point will be added at the end of the match, so he has a very tall hill to climb. Got to know that quick shot's coming off the whistle. there by Seth Gross. Gross, very good technique. Gross looking to put him in trouble here a little bit. After Gustafson, is there any chance that you're in trouble? You know, 
really getting yourself into some near fall points here. And right there, here it is. There you see right there, as we know, Seth Gross, very good at cradles. Dennis held onto that leg too long, got himself exposed. Very close to disaster right now for Gustafson. Gross trying to finish it off. He's already up 11 to 5. Really tight there. Really tight. Under 30 seconds left to go in the match. And a pin. Big pin for Seth Gross. And a clutch six points will go to South Dakota State. What a match it was for the number two wrestler in the country. Yes, Seth Gross, very impressive win over Dennis Gustafson, 30 in the coach's poll. There he is, he's got that tight cradle locked up. Again, that's the importance of scrambling here. We saw last night was at Tavaski, uh, exposed himself right off that scramble, and that's, uh, that's how college matches can be won or lost there. So now we go to 141, Brendan Ryan against Henry Polmeyer for South Dakota State. Of course, we started out at 65. We have a few more matches to go for South Dakota State to try to climb back into this one. It's now 22 to 9. Little antsy to start out this match. Brennan Ryan, a redshirt sophomore. Paul Meyer, a redshirt freshman. Curious to see how Brennan Ryan handles this. He's uh, with Virginia Tech's schedule. He's been uh, struggling a little bit with some of the top ranked guys. and. Um, Paul Meyer, also another younger guy. Let's see if he can make something happen. Paul Meyer, nine and eight. Brendan Ryan, two and seven or two and sixteen. Had a tough match yesterday against Kevin Jack, one of the best wrestlers in the country at 141. If you're Chris Bono or Kevin Dresser, you're probably looking at development in this match, correct? I think for sure. Um, both guys have matches that they could probably handle. Um, I think either guy can win this match. and I think right now they're trying to develop their offense a little bit, uh, especially um, when they get on bottom. Uh, these are both two young guys, and going from high school to college, it's hard to get good on bottom. And now some near fall points coming up for Pohlmeyer and a big pin. So two pins in a row for South Dakota State. Real young mistake right there. He got in the front headlock position, kept his elbow up. All Paul Meyer had to do was capitalize by threading the needle and going to that cement job. Huge pin right for here. Henry Pohlmeyer. Got his elbow too high. He capitalizes. So now the score all of a sudden, 22 to 15. South Dakota State only down by seven with two matches left to go as we head to break here on ACC Network. It's one of the better matches we've been promised here today. Everly, though, a big win last night against a freshman in, against in NC State. He's able to ice the victory for Virginia Tech. And David Kocher, a junior out of Wagner, South Dakota, 17-6 NCAA qualifier last year. So this definitely is going to be easy for Zach Everly. this year for Everly. Coming against Lehigh in the duel. Quick shot from Kocher there. From, from the open. No tying up there. And now potentially dangerous. As we'll see. Uh, Everly likes to feel guys out the first couple minutes. Uh, maybe even the first period. Guys get to his legs, but you just make sure to fight him off and uh, get to his offense by the second and third period. I mean, you're trying to feel a guy out, though, in that first period and try to really figure out your opponent. Can that be a disadvantage sometimes? Because maybe you'll get caught off guard with a little bit more of aggression than you expected. I think for sure. I think you should go out and try to attack right from the start uh, against any guy you're wrestling, whether it's the number two ranked guy in the country or the number you know, 57th. But um, I think getting that first takedown, kind of slapping the guy in the face right off the bat, uh, really helps you towards the end of the, end of the match. David Kocher certainly is wasting no time in opening shot, still trying to finish again. 
going back to that, if you're not going to work for that first takedown right off the bat, that's when you get caught off guard. Uh, we've actually seen Zach Epperly really, uh, get a lot of, uh, give up a lot of first takedowns in matches. Nobody really gets worried because that's just kind of the style that he has. Epperly still not letting anything up. It's actually quite impressive to see him just kind of pogo stick around on the mat right now. Out of bounds. Coacher went for it. He gave up that leg to try to chase those hips, and that's a mistake that a lot of guys make. And instead of pulling them in and securing that leg, they, they just dive for it. After all that, Coacher almost had that opening takedown here in the first period, but right back to neutral in the middle of the circle. Coacher with a strong two shots coming from the open. Uh, mostly low ankles here on Zach Epperly. Uh, Coacher's a guy that's no stranger to big ranked matchups. He was able to beat Kyle Crutchmer, who's the number nine wrestler in the country at 174, wrestling for Oklahoma State. And he's coming off of relatively big tech fall win against West Virginia, where South Dakota State was able to beat the Mountaineers. He won 22 to seven in Morgantown. Yeah, and Crushmer is a guy, you just said he had a big win over Crushmer. He's a guy who uh, Zach Epperly had, has had some battles with over the past two years. End of the period, this is where we're going to see Epperly really try to pour it on to get that, that two takedown and ride him out. With Ten seconds left, Epperly still trying to work something. Coach does a good job of holding him off the last 10. So an eventful yet, we don't get any points out of the first period, which is definitely something that kind of shocked me because we saw Coacher with a couple of great shots inside on Epperly. Epperly's able to fight him off, and then right there, he's able to do the same thing, vice versa. Well, that shows you how hard it is to score on these guys, too. You get to D1 college wrestling, you get to the two top 15 guys. Uh, okay. They're both, they both have very good offense, but it's insanely hard to score on them. Coach are able to get that first point out of the escape. Shot in for Epperly. Still trying to finish. Still nothing for Epperly. Ankle pass there by Coach, and now he's looking to turn it into his points. Coach was stuck at a 180 degree right there. What exactly what he was, was he trying to do? Well, Epperly knew that uh, if he would have let Coach keep rolling, that he was going to pass that ankle just like he did. So Epperly didn't want to improve his position to make sure Coach couldn't pass the ankle, but Coach ended up passing it and they got a stalemate. Really with strong high crotch, deep high crotch penetration steps uh, from the open. Still no points for Epperly. Coach are getting that escape right as we started the second period. You wonder if Epperly was trying to ride him there at the beginning of the second period. That kind of looked like Coach was in, uh, went a little early. Coacher being aggressive again here in the final 20 seconds, the second period. Everly just trying to spread out and fight him off once more. In the full split there, you can see how strong his hips are fighting off that single leg. Two seconds left, still nothing for Coacher. That's the way it'll end. The applause right now from the Virginia Tech faithful because Epperly is so so close to giving up that takedown, and as of right now, he still hasn't yet. Yeah, right now it's a little too close for comfort. I think Epperly right now needs to make sure he gets on his offense because Coach right now is shooting from the open. Uh, Epperly's not able to get close to him, and that's really costing him uh, low ankles. And Coach, a top 20 wrestler, as you saw right there, ranked number 16 by Intermat, number 15 in the coaches poll. He gets the escape and ties it up. Go, it 
given how hard it is for both these guys to score on each other, I think one takedown here could ice it. So it'll be interesting to see who gets on the aggressive here. Scores now one to one. As I go to the edge of the circle right there, what's the strategy for you on the offense? Well, there's, there's two things that you can do. You can either go for the stalling call and make it look good like you're, you're the only guy doing any work, maybe back him out of bounds, or you go for that you know, uh, on the edge, sneak away, uh, takedown, try to get a quick spin behind, maybe a knee tap is, if you're talking about Zach Epperly. But um, I think uh, uh, Coacher did a good job there of making sure he wasn't called for stalling and uh, stayed, stayed in good position. Running time obviously not a factor in this one, folks. Only 11 seconds, and that's going to go to the Jackrabbit right there. And David Kocher. And there's that knee tap. I believe very comfortable with the front headlock position. He's got a lot of a lot of tools there. Again, low ankle from Kocher. Going in for another shot, and Epperly just sprawls out. Twenty seconds left to go. And a stalemate call. We knew this one had the potential to go right down to the buzzer. Got in for Kocher. Almost got the takedown and Epperly right back to his feet. Great shot there from Coacher trying to take him down for the last 10 seconds. Epperly with the recovery. So now here we go to overtime. Both guys really like him shooting from the open here. Takedown from either guy here is going to end the match. Otherwise, we're going as a double overtime. Nothing really has gave for either wrestler here. We've seen a multitude of shots, and they've been able to fight it off. But Epperly trying to finish it, and he does. Big win in overtime for Zach Epperly. Front headlock position was able to drop down to that ankle. Uh, something he's really good at, and uh, pushed the pace and made sure he finished without giving up any scrambling positions. So Zach Epperly wins this one three to one in overtime and ties up the team score. South Dakota State three, Virginia Tech three. You're on ACC Network Extra.